Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, and everybody inside and outside the ballpark. My name is Nomad Player, and welcome to episode 37 of the Nomad Notes podcast, where we talk about many different types of creators around the platform. I'm your host, and with me today, I have the uh, one of the world creators for three different game worlds inside of VR Chat. Uh, we have Teal. Teal, welcome, <laughs> welcome in, welcome in. Hope you're, doing, hope you're doing well. Thank you for having me, man. I'm doing good. How yeah, are you doing? I'm doing good, doing good. And of course, um, you know, so for, you know, the general listening audience at home, uh, what exactly do you do inside of VR chat? Hey, everyone. My name is Teal. Um, I'm the programmer for Chimpkins, and we are the creators behind Zombie Survival, uh, Deagle Duel, and The Hunt. Hell Yeah. So I guess, you know, one of the very first questions I want to ask you, um, so what got you into making games on VRChat? Um, honestly, it's just, I've been, like, ever since I heard about VR in general, I've been, like, super interested. But, uh, like, back then, I was poor, and I kind of just didn't really realize... Uh, like buying a headset and whatnot so i kind of just ended up like working on small projects in unity just for uh, so you're you, yeah. you know you're making small unity projects and stuff you know so i guess kind of oh, <laughs> it's okay i'll say just to uh, kind of we'll go back a little bit um so what got you into vr chat in the first place like what inspired you to come to vr chat in the first place um, honestly, I was the Uganda Knuckles thing, the meme that just kind of uh, popped up and it was like funny. And me and my brother actually, we ended up uh, playing VR chat and just joining like random lobbies, just fucking uh, <laughs> harassing people as Knuckles. And it was, it was such a good time. We, we've been like, we've stayed up for like 7 a.m. or something. I gotcha. Yeah, I'll say Uganda Knuckles definitely definitely was a a peak era time when it came to VR chat, when it came to the chaos. Um so I guess uh so kind of to go down the timeline a little bit. So uh correct me if I'm wrong, uh so you the first one you had made was in fact zombie survival, correct? Yes, that is correct. How did the idea for zombie survival come about? Like what made you want to make zombie survival? Um, so, in the past, I've been, like, messing around with Unity, um, just making small projects, trying to make, like, a multiplayer game, but, uh, it's really hard, really. It's, it's not fun, especially, if, like, by yourself. And, like, thinking back, like, my main priority was, like, focusing on implementing, uh, systems to prevent cheating and whatnot, and, like, I started from the wrong position and i should have focused on the gameplay first and maybe uh realized instead of like a pvp game maybe you should just make like a pve game instead and so when like in 2019 or was it like the end of 2018 i believe uh half Life alex got announced uh i thought to myself okay i have funny money now why don't i just buy the the valve index and you know, just uh, take the first step into finally getting into VR. And I ordered the headset, and I believe, like, a few days after, it sold out for, like, several months in Europe, which is hilarious. And I kind of just uh, started playing other games. I don't, I don't remember, like, specifically Pavlov the most, and also sometimes trying VR chat, but not uh, not as much as I do now. And that was also like, I wasn't really much in the community at all. Um, I kind of just realized, yeah, this is a fun game. Like people make, make stuff on here, how do they make stuff? And eventually I kind of like learned that there's actually like a programming language in VRChat, like around, I don't know, like 2021. 20, and I thought, oh, I'm just, I don't know, try messing around in VRChat. And create something 
instead of suffering on Unity specifically and maybe move my suffering over to VRChat. <laughs> and, uh, I, I, sorry. No, you're good. You're good. No, I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm, in, I'm interested realistically. <laughs> yeah. Um, I kind of just try to figure out how Udon works specifically in networking aspects and how, like, I, I knew, like, about the C-sharp part for the most part. It wasn't too difficult to get into. But Udon has weird ways of going about things. Like, you need to do a lot of workarounds and a lot of things are, like, not available to you, which would be just fine in, in normal Unity use. And so uh, we had the idea, there's not really a COD Zombies game on VRChat, so what if we just made that? And the idea was like, um, um, like I don't remember, I think it was 2021. And so me and my girlfriend started working on, on, the, on like the idea. I was doing like all the code and like the gun specifically. And uh, she was learning how to do world design and Unity. Like moving, uh, like getting like an asset pack and like moving roads and houses and whatnot. And uh, it kind of took a while, like especially like learning like the networking aspect because we initially I thought maybe, okay, we just sync the zombies uh, constantly and whatnot and it'll be fine. And then I realized if you actually test with other people, and you have like zomb zombies for one constantly sinking it's like draining your bandwidth and also having a system where zombies change ownership to another person the zombies would literally just start teleporting for other people and if you're in like um the funny end of it they would literally just teleport inside of you and so i thought maybe okay um what is a better way of saving bandwidth and syncing them somewhat reliably? And I thought maybe, okay, instead of just syncing position and whatnot and ownership, we just give everything to the master. And the master has like a radius check for the NPCs and then they, it's like a trigger. And if a player walks into it, it checks the distance between the player and the the current target. and then decides if the zombie should switch target. And basically all it does is sync a player ID to all the players and the zombies will change target. And there you go. I gotcha. And that's kind of how um, I started learning the, the networking aspect and then also like working on the gun system. Uh, I, I like guns, but um, guns are fun. Fair enough. I was going to say, yeah, because I mean, with zombie survival alone, you know, you definitely have a you know, a multitude of weaponry when it comes to, um, you know, the, the guns that you can have in the game, whether it's the mystery box or the ones that you can like, you know, pick up off the walls or purchase off the walls. Um, so I guess one of the questions I wanted to ask, um, when it came to the, uh, the weapons choice, you know, was there any particular like thought process behind it or were you like, haha, funny, you know, funny gun or, oh, we need this type of gun. Like, what was what was the thought process behind, like, the choice of weaponry? That's a excellent question. Um, so, basically, the initial idea was to create COD Zombies, but we had, like, this low-poly asset pack because we figured, okay, uh, Questies, they run on really bad hardware, so what if we just made a low-poly game to support that platform specifically? And we had, like, this asset pack for... Uh, gun models and another asset pack for like city assets and so I was hoping maybe we could get like the you know the funny black ops starting weapons like you know the M14 was it the Olympia double barrel shot gun and of course the 1911 and then kind of just add whatever after uh, the asset pack that we had that we have for the guns doesn't have that well doesn't have the, the shotgun or the M14, so we kind of just used whatever and just, I don't know, try to make it somewhat fit in. Like, uh, you know, the, uh, the, the pump shotgun at the start, um, it, 
doesn't really fit per se into COD Zombies because that gun is like awful to use. And I think for ZS specifically, it's actually kind of more fun because you get to shoot six times. You don't have this awful long reload time. I don't know. And yeah, the assets were pretty good in my opinion. Although looking back now, um, they were actually not the most optimized, but we've learned, we we improved, and hoping that our future projects will be definitely better on that end. No, yeah, absolutely. It's always good to, you know, take a look at it and see what can be improved or modified to make it more balanced or whatever the case may be. Um, so one kind of to go into that, um, because, you know, there are, correct me if I'm wrong, there are three different maps with Zombie Survival now, if I remember correctly. Or is it only two? I want to say it's three. There's two maps currently. Two maps. Yeah, because it's Abandoned City, yeah. and then the, the um, what's the name? Frozen Frontier. Frozen Frontier, that's what it was, yeah. So, um, I guess kind of to, you know, kind of deep dive into those a little bit. So what kind of made you, because you had like, you know, Abandoned City, which is kind of more, you know, cityscape, you know, post-apocalyptic, Call of Duty-esque. So what made you want to create that map and then go ahead and make Frozen Frontier? So I don't really have much say in that. That was uh, Nikki's part. So initially when we uh, started the, the whole process, I asked her to make uh i believe <laughs> it was transit from black ops 2 which is a very funny map very mixed reviews but um she kind of took it she took the whole city aspect well it's not really an entire city but she took the one aspect of it and turned it into whatever she thought was funny and yeah i, I just roll with it you know it's not like um i want to do the the mapping part so i just let her do her thing, and I guess, I think, in my opinion, it turned out great, because I kind of also realized where she wants to do her own designs, and I fully support that, and I think if we just have, like, different maps, like, we don't need to, to have exact uh, replicas of, you know, Call of Duty, we can just make our own things and still make it work, and give people different experience com to compared to what... um Call of Duty has to offer, and I think that's also a very good thing because, you know, we get to have our own uh, creativity shown based on what we put out, right? No, absolutely. I was saying like, it's definitely... Uh, oh, sorry, you didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Uh, oh, no, no, I was just going to say it's not like a cardboard copy of Cod Zombies. It's like everything is somewhat different. True. I was going to say, yeah, because uh, one, one of my, and this is just a personal uh, personal thing, one of my favorite guns, um, especially when it's uh, max ammoed insta kill, is the bubble gun. The bubble gun fucking sends me anytime I get that and it's max ammoed <laughs> insta kill. I'll be like, I bet bubble gun, bop, 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 bop. Just, just start, just put bubbles all over the place. It, it's, it's the funniest thing to watch them just run into bubbles and like just peel over and die. That's, that's just. <laughs> <laughs> that's just a me thing you know because you have like your perks you have uh like the viable perks um yeah so but like you said it's you know kind of your own spin on cod zombies you know so it's you know it's not like a one-to-one -one. It, bro i don't think anybody has the the brain power to make a one-to-one -one, like and make it functional for quest that'd be crazy oh but um i'll say that definitely Definitely an interesting thing, because uh, funny enough, uh, as this episode's uh, being recorded, uh, you actually just had pushed another update uh, to Zombie Survival. So what all, what all exactly did you modify with this this um, recent update? Oh yeah, um, so I really wanted to change up the more uh, niche perks that we had. Uh, it's mostly the more recent ones that we added, like the the Molotov, uh, the Muscle Pizza, and the the Tombstone perk. So we kind of just uh, turned them into more viable options, where the the Molotov would basically now slow zombies, 
instead of just dealing damage. Um, the muscle pizza, instead of just also re uh, reducing your recall with the guns, it will also now give you a small radius around you where it basically increases your damage by 15%. Just like small small things to add on top to maybe change up the... I don't want to call it perk meta, but you know, just change up the, the gameplay of what you might want to use and maybe give more variety to people because I think the game would be more or is more stale, especially if you just keep buying the same things over and over. And I personally, I really enjoy ha games have a lot of different options available. Uh, also, that you mentioned the the bubble gun specifically, like uh, like we have a lot of different guns. Um, are they somewhat similar? I guess you could also literally just use the same gun and have major success. But then again. There's not really much variety, right? So we kind of have different play styles, and we also balance like the guns somewhat around that. And for example, like uh, the the auto shotgun from the mystery box, we gave it infinite ammo just because we thought, okay, it'd be funny. Why not just have a shotgun with infinite ammo? And because some people love shotguns, and you could literally just sit there and just bang, 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 reload, just keep going and just never stop. No, absolutely. And I think like having a lot of uh, different uh, variety and options to choose from at least encourage people to try new things. Uh, I guess Mystery Box also kind of forces you to it if you buy into it. I mean, you could literally just buy like the MP5 and you'll be fine. But, you know, most people will just walk to the Mystery Box, just buy and then complain if they get the bubble gun, right? Mm hmm. I was going to say, you know, it's it's funny that you mentioned the mystery box. Um, so out of, out of curiosity, how many uh, weapons in total are in the mystery box? I'm assuming it's all of them, but like how many, like number wise, how many, how many weapons are there that you could get? Um, it's not all of them. They, we separated the mystery box from the, uh, the gun, uh, the weapons in the mystery box from the guns that you can buy on the walls. Mm. And basically how we set it up is every gun can be purchased four times except for specific ones like the ray gun, the rocket launcher, uh, the chainsaw, and, the, well, like, usually special weapons that we consider to be, like, uh, very unique. And those are, like, weapons uh, that you could get m a few more off simply because... Um, if you play in like a large instance and maybe people want the same weapon, right? And we kind of just add more of this, of those, uh, well, maybe I should explain specifically why we have limitations on, on the weapons. Sure. Um, because VR chat, uh, the way the networking works, we are not able to create weapons in the game. And so what you need to do is create them all in the editor in Unity and then have them uh, be spawned into the game from, although they already exist in the editor, right? And that's basically like usually what, what worlds will do. And it's also like a, another big part that I will probably get into later uh, regarding spawning items. Yeah, no, absolutely. But yeah, that's like... Uh, Hell yeah. No, I mean, I, I didn't know that. That's a, that's a cool, neat, well, not neat, but that's a cool thing to know, though, for, like, any, you know, c creators that are wanting to make these types of game worlds, because I, I had no idea that was a thing. You know, I thought you just, you know, you just, it just gives you a, you know, a replica of the asset, and you just go ham. It's not that simple, which is kind of, kind of cool, to say the least. Um, it, It's good, it's good to know, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Um. Oh, so, definitely. Yeah. So, you know, out of curiosity, um, so I know uh, with zombie survival specifically, um, because it's been around for a while, you know, uh, one of my one of my questions I wanted to ask, uh, is there any plans for potentially another map or maybe like another like ch giant change when it comes to the game itself? Uh, currently... We had a few ideas for a new map. Uh, I'm not going to spoil anything. 
there's also the the issue that we are out of storage for Quest specifically because Quest has a 100 megabyte world limit, and so we if we added another map, uh, we would probably go above that and probably need to cut some something about the game. I mean, it it'd be possible, but we kind of put our our main primary focus on on new games because you kind of also want to work on other things too and not just zombie survival now we released zombie survival um oh damn i forgot is it 2022 are you yes. going to cut that no yeah i think you got it yeah 2022 unity oh wait that's easy to see one sec yeah oh, good moment. i just need to check the hunt uh okay yeah all right uh i need to correct Go something ahead. first uh we started working on zombie survival in 2022 not 2021 and basically we kind of worked up to the release to and at right at the end of 2022 like literally on the last day which is funny kind of like uh <laughs> got to release the game and celebrate new years but We've been like constantly updating the game up until a point where um, October of 2020, uh, 2023, where we added Frozen Frontier and we kind of just started slowing down there and uh, also like consider like developing something new, something that's not using the systems that we have in ZS because admittedly, um, if you're like starting out with a new project, you're gonna have a lot of mistakes in there and issues that will probably haunt you forever. So, and I kind of just ended up uh, creating a another project with a different goal in mind to create a better gun system and create a a match match system and also create a way to spawn in network objects at runtime which means we don't have them specifically uh spawned in the in the scene prior we just have a list of all the objects and then we can create them in the game um at the same time mm. no i mean that's really cool um well i'll say before we get into that one in particular um i do want to touch base a little bit um on the other game that you had made which was the hunt uh which correct me if i'm wrong uh that was your entrant for spookality 2022 correct yes yeah so one of the first questions i wanted to ask um what made you want to um you know put an entry in for spookality um so we had a initial goal of releasing zombie survival for spookality 2022 but the game just wasn't ready yet literally so i had a really stupid idea we just take the code we have in zombie survival right now change a few assets make a new map and just make a submission for spookality <laughs> which was uh, incredibly cursed um it was really funny though uh like you can tell like the the gun models are low poly art style the same you see in zombie survival and then you have like these realistic creatures just walking all over the place you have like semi-realistic wall textures and whatnot and also like a blood pile on the floor which is like really bugged and so that game i admit it was uh kind of rushed it out but i think it's hilarious i think the game is <laughs> is great for and, sure uh, yeah um we kind of just released that um and now looking back yes the game is horrible but i think it's funny and it i also turned it into an inside joke for 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 the staff team in chimkins so whenever we try to like make fun of uh a world i always bring up the hunt because it's goofy fair oh well not not any not any other world but the hunt specifically fair you just like talk about worlds and you're like yeah it's the hunt <laughs> but 
<laughs> but no, I mean, regardless, like, because uh, I do remember playing that map a little bit. Um, it was definitely, it was definitely different. The hunt being, you know, its own unique thing. Like you said, the low poly weaponry and then the more realistic like monsters. It was definitely, definitely a fun time to say the least. Um, <laughs> so kind of, kind of one of the questions I wanted to ask about that. Um, do you think there'll ever be a plan to potentially remaster the game and kind of maybe revisit the project and, you know, see, see if there's another way to go about it? Um, well, I guess as a fun Novid notes exclusive, I'm going to mention that we did plan on working on the hunt too, and it wasn't going to be, it's going to be a completely different game, but the premise would be similar, right? But we did some internal testing. Uh, I had like a few friends over. I think you were there too. And we we're like uh, testing out this very cursed new version. And um, I was incredibly bugged. That was before Deagle Duel. It was using uh, the same systems as well. But um, yeah, it was incredibly bugged. And we kind of just canned the idea and... I ended up like revisiting the hunt specifically and changed a few things around like uh, code wise to fix up some bugs, some issues that I had on my mind for forever now and we I never touched the hunt so I thought maybe okay what if we just do a tiny update to fix those major issues and just leave it where it was and hopefully maybe whoever finds the game will have a better time than prior. Fair enough. I, I was going to say, um, well, the, I, I actually was not there for the, the Hunt 2 one. Um, sounds cool as hell, though. Um, but no, I mean, hopefully one day, you know, we'll we'll see another Hunt style game from, you know, you and Chimkins. I, I know probably some people would definitely be looking forward to that, especially, you know, with how big like horror related games are in this platform. Um, you, you definitely got you got the audience for it. It just needs to be, you know, fine tuned and all that, and not be the hunt. No I'm kidding, but <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna start using that now. That's funny, um, but <laughs> but yeah, no, it's it's definitely cool to say the least that there was potential plans, and hopefully, you know, hopefully it's not 100% scrapped. Um, so I guess kind of to go down the timeline a little bit because you, you know, as you said yourself, you know, you're kind of becoming more active on the platform, you know, doing things, hanging out with people, you know, and whatnot. Um, so funny enough, um, cause we met actually, um, we met at an event. Um, oh. yeah, we, we met at an event <laughs> and, um, you know, first of all, it's, it was you amazing person. Um, but I was going to say, so one of the things I wanted to ask, um, cause you've now attended a few different VR conventions, uh, within VR chat. Um, so what, in your personal opinion, you know, did you personally see any benefit from doing these conventions or did you at least have fun doing the said conventions? I guess, I guess that's one of the ones I wanted to ask. I don't, I didn't really check any numbers specifically because I thought maybe it's not really easy to tell given that player numbers really fluctuate, especially on weekends. And I didn't really pay too much attention to it personally, but uh, I kind of just, we kind of just joined the events, uh, specifically it was, uh, uh, VCAT 2023, uh, the winter, I believe. Mm. I joined with my, with my friend Savvy Chap, and we had, like, a shared booth. Basically, he had, like, the, the ground floor, and I had, like, the upper floor, and we spent, like, a day just in a VC and just building the whole thing, and it was pretty funny. And, uh, yeah, I also joined the PJKT, uh. It was, I think it was fun. Uh, I got to meet like different creators, got to hang out with many people. And I think for, just for that fact alone, it was a great time. I, I don't really care like how our booth did personally. Uh, I think in my honest opinion, the best advertisement is literally just putting something on the VRChat world list 
because realistically that's going to be the place where people look for worlds, right? So if your game, I guess, is somewhat visible, and or maybe they have it played it before, they have a favorite and whatnot, maybe they actually like like the game, then yeah, they will be joining back, and I think that's like more valuable than uh, having a booth in those worlds, in my opinion, at least. But Fair enough. I think it differs a lot on what you are actually advertising, specifically if you have like assets. If you like sharing assets and whatnot, or like avatars, I think for those types of types of events, I think those are uh, a lot better because like people walk around, they get to see your booth, and they maybe check out your your model and just be like, oh, I want to buy this, and that's like a whole different audience, of course. And yeah, I think for world creators, just the world list itself is better. That's fair. Uh, I was going to say, you know, because like you said, you know, you got to meet different creators, got to hang out with a bunch of different people, um, you know, because that's what, you know, these types of events are about. It's about the community. It's about, you know, getting to meet, you know, people who make awesome stuff, um, you know, getting to understand that all of us as creators are just normal people that just make things, you know. That's one of that's yeah. one of the things I believe in. You know, we're, we're as as creators, we're just we're normal people, just like you know us and you know people watching or listening to this. You know, we're all just normal people. We like to have fun. Why not? You know, make a big pretty event. Goofy. Yeah, exactly. Pretty goofy. Hello, everyone. Real quick, just want to pause the episode right here. Uh, first and foremost, thank you so much for watching the episodes. Uh, it means a lot that you're, you know, making sure to stay this long into the episode. Um, really quick, just want to make a small announcement. I do want to thank some amazing people who have supported me over on Throne. We're currently over 60% funded for the new setup. Um, it means the world to me that you guys are wanting to support the podcast, support all the creations, and help me expand and improve upon the content that I'm making. Um, I got a bunch of special thank yous. Uh, we got Volkashikt, Emma Torch, Down Lyric, Asher Derora, KJD, Monk42, Sonic Man7708, Teal, King Royeko, Bunks Girl, Roll Tide813, Maple Moose, and of course, all of the anonymous gifters. Uh, you guys mean the absolute world to me, and I can't thank you guys enough for supporting my creations and everything about. But if you're interested, there also is the Novid Squad VRC group, uh, NOVED6608 for that. And we also do now have a Blue Sky account. We're on Blue Sky because honestly, Elon app is Elon app is Elon app. We won't talk about that. But make sure to go follow the Blue Sky. Um, I will be posting more updates in regards to uh, episodes and everything else, um, interacting with the community more. But yeah, go check that out. But with that, let's get right back into the episode woo um so kind of to further progress down the timeline a little bit um so you recently uh it was either i believe it was last month uh you actually released your third one which was deagle duel um and yeah. there, there's a whole trailer we'll throw it up on the screen um you know regarding deagle duel uh shout out lucario um <laughs> uh but um traveling lucario to be specific um there's a lot of lucario names on vr chat i've come to find out traveling lucario specifically um but so i guess one of the one of the things i wanted to ask you know because going from a pve game like zombie survival versus a pvp game uh one of the questions i wanted to ask what was was there any like major struggle kind of switching between pve versus pvp um i think that's a very good question actually because so what we did with deagle duel is we used all the systems that i coded and the maps that nikki made and we used all that but now with the release of Deagle Duel, um, actually we do also have received a lot of help from Team Liqua. And if you have heard of them before, uh, they are the creators behind Jetski Islet and more recently uh, Jetski Rush, as well as some other really cool worlds. And they are helping us with optimizing the gun models and also 
some funny shader things that I don't understand because I'm stupid. But uh, Lips and Coop are very amazing people. Big shout out! Definitely check out their their worlds. And also regarding the gun model specifically, um, it's very important that we have them all optimized for quests specifically because quest is very shit. So you might like notice like rough edges and whatnot, but they the whole goal is to make sure that they will perform good on all hardware, or at least as much to our ability as possible. So for Deagle Duel, it's actually uh, very funny because the game we kind of just planned like uh, if, before we started working on it, we planned it like a few days beforehand and the release was literally like, I don't remember, I believe like around three to four weeks uh, before we started working on it. So uh, it was a massive crunch, but basically what we did for the game is we just took the systems that I made for our future projects and we took all that and we turned it into a very goofy PvP game. And I we asked Nikki to make maps. She made like this very funny uh, cargo ship and she also made a funny space warehouse. And we also got Shopao to make a map as well, which is really cool. And so we kind of just rushed the game out. I was like coding like crazy like for days and a shout out to Traveling Lucario specifically because he was like constantly helping me uh, test things and make sure like uh, to fix bugs and whatnot. And like there were a lot of issues because the whole system that I made was very custom and trying to avoid like whatever VH it made. Um I guess I can like get into more in depth. Uh specifically, like I mentioned prior, uh we have ne network instantiating, basically creating weapons or anything at runtime. Uh we have a matchmaking system where we can split players or groups of players into different maps and they would like be separated. They wouldn't have any information about each other, or well, somewhat at least. And all the networking would basically just block out for, uh, if like any networking came in, they'd just block out entirely and you could just chill in your map and don't have to worry about the other maps. So that's what we call instancing, uh, instance system. Basically, we take the idea of a VRChat instance and we turn it into new instances of our system. <laughs> I guess to make it more simple, we call it matchmaking now. But uh, we also made the whole new gun system. Uh, we were trying to go with a more semi-realistic vibe. And also have the guns be interactable compared to like ZS where you can only shoot and you have to press your trigger on the, the magazine to reload it. But for, uh, for the new system, we... Well, I went about to code like parts in where you push your joystick down to eject the magazine you grab a new magazine like similar to half-life alex where you just pull it from your shoulder or pavlov you pull it from your hip and you just load the gun and you have to either manually operate the slide or you can push the right joystick up to engage the slide release and then also different types of guns where for example the ak-74m where you don't have a slight release, you just uh, have to pull the charging handle again after loading your gun and whatnot, and also like pump sh shotguns. Also funny part where you have to pump it every time you shoot, right? And like all this interactive uh, interactiveness, it just took uh, like several months to develop. Initially, I was hoping maybe you could get it done faster, but it just, it's a very, ex like very big system where also making sure it's optimized for quest and also making sure that the bandwidth usage i guess is somewhat low and then all these different parts about it it took many months to make and we just took that system and put it in deagle duel and like all these systems and i'm very proud of how it turned out now we didn't really have the amount of people testing 
because we didn't really have too many testing sessions. We had one uh, pre-alpha test, and we kind of just pushed the game out like a week later. And so there were issues, um, but two weeks now, I believe, after release, uh, I've been constantly working and trying to fix all the issues. And I'm hoping the game is somewhat stable now, because we are heavily relying on these systems to work for future projects. So as long as the game has players right now, I kind of think the game will die, but at least as 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 long as it has players right now, I want to make sure that all the at least the the game breaking issues are fixed, and we can move the system to the next game, and add more on top of it, right? And that's like the whole big thing about Deagle Duel. It's not really. It's more like a prototype, in my opinion, because it was really just testing out the systems in a public setting and. Of course, it, it had issues, but I'm hoping they're more or less ironed out. Yeah, no, for I sure. I guess I didn't really go into the PvP aspect. Um, the PvP system is very simple. Uh, every player gets a hitbox, it follows the player, and you just shoot each other. And also, when you, when you die, uh, there's a very short delay between you, uh, you dying and respawning again to make sure, you know... Uh, you stay in the game, you don't like um, feel like you have to like wait a, another round or you have to leave the game now because the game, I don't know, there's not much to do. But instead, you just put your right back into the action with full health and uh, like a few invulnerability seconds and you can basically just keep playing, you get a new gun and yeah, there you go. It's a very reminiscent of Quake or Unreal Tournament and I thought maybe It'll be a fun game idea, and yeah, uh, I knew that boomer shooters are kind of dead nowadays, but you know, uh, it's it's still a prototype game for me personally. I don't know how the other people in Jim can see it, but for me, I just want to make sure all the code works, and before we move on to a much bigger game, and make sure uh, everything will work out just better. No, fair enough. But no, yeah, I was going to say um it's definitely cuz like like you said there are there are quite a bit of shooter games, but that that shooter game niche is very popular within VR chat to say the least, you know. And granted, the game's been out over gosh, the game's only been out for how long? Like officially? A little over 2 weeks, I believe. As yeah. of as of recording. And it's already it's already got 100 over 100,000 visits, over 11,000 favorites. Like, in two weeks' time, that's that's fairly impressive, you know, con considering, you know, there's not a lot of worlds that can say that they do that um, within two weeks' time, to say the least. Um, now, granted, this episode's going to be coming out a little bit later, so those numbers are probably changed, but, you know, the point still stands. Um, it's definitely It's definitely impressive, to say the least. Um, you know, because I, I like you, like you said earlier, uh, Shopa was the one that made the the Castle Town. Um, so I guess one of the one of the questions that I wanted to ask, because with Zombie Survival, you kind of worked more internally with Chimkins, um, but working with multiple creators with Deagle Duel. So one of the questions I wanted to ask um, was it more enjoyable in the in the full process? working with other creators versus working like just within the chimkins team oh that is a very tough question because uh show power just did the map and he just sent it to me and that's kind of the whole whole thing the whole deal um it wasn't really like we communicated on the level that i do with say lucario where we're like constantly exchanging feedback and suggestions and ideas and bug tests right um, uh, um, I don't really have an opinion on working with other creators as of yet, but I might be open to the idea again. I guess. Fair enough. Yeah. So you're still kind of getting used to working with other creators. I guess the a fair point to put it as. Yeah, it's it's uh, also like um, we kind of stay in our own team. Um, it's mainly just for um. Uh, 
I don't know, like having different roles in the team. Like Nikki doing the, the map design and me doing the, the programming and Lucario doing the audio and videos. Um, I don't know. I just feel like we can kind of do everything that we need and we don't really need help too much. Granted, the thing with Shopa was uh, pretty funny, actually. Uh, uh, he was like playtesting Deagle Duel, like pre, pre, pre alpha, right? And uh, we kind of just got the idea, okay, why don't, why, uh, why don't you make a map, right? And well, that's just kind of what happened. So I, I don't want to like uh, discourage anyone from working with other creators. It's just that for me, I didn't really have too much opinion on it as of yet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, and that's fair. You know, it, it's not a bad thing to, you know, not want to per se. And a lot of collaborations, funny enough that you mentioned that, a, a lot of collaborations are a lot of on the whim type things, you know, whether it be like streaming, like collab streams, collab events, a lot of it will just be on the whim, be like, yeah, let's do this. Oh, okay, cool. Let's do this. Like, you know, it's no different than like some of some of the events I've held um, when it comes to the Novit Squad or, you know, granted, uh, there's other communities that do a lot more planning and, uh, you know, other stuff too. But realistically, a lot of collaborations and like, you know, collab projects are a lot of on them type stuff, you know, and kind of it's funny that you mentioned, you know, other creators and whatnot. Um, I wanted to do this as a bit and I'm still committed to this bit. So funny enough, um, on the very first episode of Novid Notes, uh, we had Gear Gabo, um, who actually uh, voice acted the the announcements, like the announcer for Deagle Duel. <laughs> um, so out of out of curiosity, um, how did how did that happen? <laughs> well, uh, well, you know. Uh... I'm good. I'm good friends with Gear, and he loves. Um, well, at least I hope he does. Um, uh, voice acting, right? Like he keeps bringing it up somewhat. So uh, he kind of lended his voice to the project. I, I I'll say, and I gave him like the what we need, like the the voice lines and whatnot, and he just kind of made the whole thing. And there you go. And then, well. We don't have to deal with copyright of taking, like, I don't know, like, unreturnment sounds. And Gear Gobo gets to get his voice in the game. I think it's just funny, right? Oh, for sure. And it's funny, if you have any of the raw voice lines for it, I'll, I'll, I'll throw some in there just for the shits and giggles <laughs> of it, just, just for the funniness of it. Um, love you, Gear. Um, go check out episode one. <laughs> It'll be... Go, go check out episode one. He he is he has massively changed since episode one, like since February. Go go check it out. But love you, gear. Anyway, um, but uh, so it's it's kind of cool that you're seeing you know more and more people getting to work with you. Like I know you said you know you're kind of more internal, but you know it, it seems like you genuinely do enjoy working with other people to an extent, to an extent. Um. Mm. You know, which is which is cool to say the least. And you know, if you're if you're a creator out there, you know, you don't have to work with other creators. You know, you, you know, if you want to work on something by yourself, go for it. Do what you love to do. You know, because that's that's really all this platform is: it's doing what you love to do and enjoying what you do within reason. I'm I'm saying it every time I say that line: I, within reason, within legal reason. Anyway, um, it, it's became an ongoing joke at this point with that line. Um, but, but yeah, no, I was going to say, uh, when it comes to, you know, your progression, you know, from zombie survival to the hunt to Deagle Duel, um, what is one piece of advice that you specifically would like to give to like any potential world creators out there? Or maybe people who want to make their very first world. Oh, okay. This is a perfect question. Because if you want to make a world, uh, don't be shy to ask in the in the VHA Discord. There's like several Udon channels. Uh, specifically, oh, well, for me, uh, I do 
code, right? So I just check all the Udon channels in case I have any any uh, questions for anything uh, specific. Like, uh, literally, just use the Discord search function. You just, you know, top right, and you just put in whatever you need. Maybe people have already answered that question. And if not, you can just type in uh, your question, just ask people. And maybe maybe you'll be lucky and someone will answer it, right? Uh, I've been active in there, uh, trying to help people somewhat. I don't know how successful or not. Uh, I'm usually pretty stupid, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, don't be afraid to ask. Um, also, very important, don't try to create a massive project like, I don't know, like a RPG game or like a massive MMORPG, right? Just don't do it. Like, first of all, uh, learn like how Unity works, uh, figure out how you optimize things. And that also goes very... Uh, very much for code specifically because you will see uh, also in the Udon channels where people will literally have funny code where they check uh, in an update loop for uh, r distance to every player, like say an NPC or whatnot. Like I, I've seen like uh, a friend of mine have that. I was a bit, uh, I told him to <laughs> change it. Uh, I told him how I did it. I don't know if he ever took that advice, but uh, feel free to ask. Uh, maybe even like ask if your code is bad, and then maybe people will like give you ideas on how to improve it. Say maybe instead of the update loop, you have a uh, send. Uh, what is it? <laughs> send delayed uh, custom method, uh, and then you just put like I don't know every half a second, and there you go. And now instead of updating every frame, it will update every half a second, and that's like. The, the small things you'll you'll learn over time when you start working on VRChat. And what I can say, like for zombie survival, like like I mentioned, like a lot of the code is uh it, it I don't wanna keep that around. It's a it's a bit cursed. Um and so um uh, I don't know. Don't be too afraid starting a project and making something that might not be great for performance reasons and whatnot. I don't know, just uh, stay on track with things that you could improve on, maybe ask around, and just make a... start with... start small. Just start uh, with a small project. Um, for me, uh, Zombie Survival, we... I, I had experience in Unity before, somewhat, but uh, depending on where you start, maybe figure out like how a button works um, maybe try making a simple gun that shoots, then maybe figure out, okay, how do I put a hitbox on a player? And, you know, like the small things, and you kind of just put them all together, and maybe you'll have something funny, right? And at the, at the end of the day, you're just, like, learning. It's a whole learning process, and you'll have milestones where, okay, I figured out how to optimize my update loop. I'm going to learn about triggers now. And you kind of just move up all these steps and you will eventually like figure out something like how to do like, I don't know, let's say an MMORPG. Well, we shouldn't really do that if you're by yourself, but uh, uh, you'll have a better grasp of where to start, um, what you need, uh, what to do, maybe the whole, um, the amount of coding you might need to do. Although for me personally, if you work on, if you like, have like a deadline on anything regarding code always multiply by three i think that's like the best advice like if you say uh you want your friend to test your game in 30 minutes just tell them instead of 30 minutes you just tell them in one and a half hours and there you go <laughs> then you have um probably have the actual time you need to make the thing or me or at least maybe i'm just stupid you know it, it could be either way Fair. but yeah <laughs> uh, ask ask around uh and uh, learn all the milestones. No, absolutely. Very, very wise words. You know, it doesn't, it never hurts to ask, you know, other creators or, you know, general public, you know, cause you never know who, who's watching and who's paying attention, you know, um, it, it definitely can be helpful to say the least. Um, but yeah, no teal, I'll say it's definitely, 
definitely fantastic having you on kind of learning more about you know you and chimkins and stuff um because we are running a little bit out of time um but no it's definitely interesting no. kind of yeah no but it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> um no but you know first and foremost thank you so much for coming on and you know kind of you know sh showcasing like what kind of talking about all the maps and stuff and you know or all the worlds and kind of like how progression has started um it is definitely a fun time to say the least yeah thank you for having me yeah of course um and of course all of um, them oh go ahead um i guess i could bring up one more thing like sure. uh regarding our next project uh we are still on the fence on what to do uh specifically as an idea but we have a we have a few very uh basically uh ideas that we want to do and we kind of just need to figure out now what does our community want and maybe if you guys want to join the chimkins discord uh, i will have a poll asking maybe you know do you like the new gun system do you want a pve game or a pvp game and all those funny questions and it will kind of determine on what we will do next and yeah uh we're like really looking for feedback no absolutely well that actually brings up my next uh my next thing uh before we do end off the episode uh, i do want to give you a spot to uh let the people know where they can find you, uh, where they can find Chimkins. Um, all of the world, the world links for all the Chimkins worlds will be down in the description as well. So make sure to go check those out. But yeah, let the people know where they can find you. Um, any links that you want, you know, on screen, in the description, all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, let them know where they can find you. Yeah. Uh, well, you can find us in the world list. Uh, we currently only plan to make world uh, game worlds but maybe in the future we'll expand to maybe other ideas uh, we don't tell yet also my tracking is ruined but you'll find us um also on, on discord uh the the link is here maybe and then also we have a youtube channel uh called chimkins vrc and we have a twitter uh, also called chimkins vrc and we kind of just post like new releases mostly or like release trailers so if you're like in like interested in what we do on a surface level just subscribe to like our youtube and you'll see like the new game releases whenever they happen in like the next uh 50 months or so and yeah um what else yeah i think that's about it i think you got blue sky don't you now chimkins does oh oh yeah that's like the whole the funny blue sky situation we need to set that up still <laughs> Uh, actually, you know what? I, I think uh, it, it'll I, be right here. <laughs> You're all right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you guys have it made, but if not, it'll be it'll be up on the screen and in the description. All the yeah, links, the guys, you already have it. Check it out. <laughs> yeah, all the links will be down in the description. So make sure to go check them out. Uh, go check out Teal Chimkins um, and all the worlds they create awesome stuff if you if you if you play vr chat and you haven't been to at least zombie survival what are you doing go play zombie survival go play deagle duel go play the hunt if you're willing and daring um <laughs> but no yeah, the hunt is funny keep in mind yeah <laughs> but no teal thank you again uh for coming on this is this is a blast um but ladies gentlemen everybody inside and outside the ballpark this has been episode 37 i think 37 if not yes post editor will correct it episode 37 of the podcast thank you all so much for watching if you did like what you listened to or watch depending on what platform you're on uh make sure to click that like button uh comment down below what's your favorite part about zombie survival or deagle duel or the hunt what's your favorite part about the chimkins worlds Teal will probably be in the comments checking it out. Um, but yeah, go go type down what was your what's your favorite part about the Chimkins worlds. Uh, but if you are watching some of the other episodes and you keep coming back, why not hit that subscribe button? You're already coming back anyway. But with that, I want to thank you all once again for watching, listening, depending on the platform. Uh, but I will see you in the next episode. Take care and peace.
Bye-bye. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Nova Squad.